the deal. It's been so long, baby. I've been waiting for this. And of course, that wonderful video you've seen actually is the song of Tolani called Bamilo. She featured Ricardo Banks, and she's here with us on the show today. And I'm so excited. <laughs> she's looking excited yeah, too. I'm very Hello, excited. Tolani. Thank Hello. you for having Welcome me. On the show. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, how are you? Really good, thank you. That song, mm -hmm. Bamil, what, what's the title of that song? Bamilo. Bamilo. What inspired that song? Um, it just, so it's pretty self-explanatory. Motinduro de Otodometata, but I've been waiting for you, it's been three and a half years. So it's just inspired by that thing that both men and women get of, you know, when you've been friends with someone for too long, or you had a crush for too long. Okay, I think the real question I should ask is, did like, you write it from a point of personal experience? Of personal experience? Uh, yeah, actually, there was once somebody I waited la that long for. Oh, oh, wow. He messed up. Haven't we oh, all been yeah, there? <laughs> wow. Oh, a moment of silence for I all know. the brothers oh. who never asked us out. <laughs> Literally. So it did, it, it, the best songs always come from a place of, mm. you know, so. Yeah. It was a long time ago, but it still, obviously still cuts, <laughs> it still cuts deep. But okay, no, so, so actually tell us, who is Tolani? Basically. Who's Tolani? Yes. Uh, me, <laughs> singer, oh, <laughs> songwriter. Um, I've been working in music for a long time, but not back. I'm, I've been back in Nigeria maybe last year. Before that, I was working in music uh, in London. Okay. Yeah, the usual music school, came back, was doing the music thing on the side, but then it became increasingly hard to do this kind of career as a side thing. Like mm. anyone who's a musician will tell you that there's, you can't put it as a side thing. You have to be 150%. So I came back and I've just been making music, doing my best, trying to put my music and mm. myself out there so that people don't have to ask me who's Tolani. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. before you <laughs> went, um, at what point did you go to London? Um, I went to boarding school in okay. London and so, university. So um, what, were you, what, what I was asking was, I wanted yeah. to find out if you started doing music before you left London. Oh, yeah. Was it something that you started while no, 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 no. I started, I went to primary school in Nigeria. Okay. I was in the school choir. I was in the church choir. Nice. You know, the, all the usual means of singing back then when singing wasn't so, it wasn't really a career option. It was just something you did. If you loved it, you did it as a hobby. So I, I was born here, primary school here, some boarding school here before going to university. Okay. Yeah. So how has family acceptance been? Because I always ask that question because I know a lot of people yeah. have this issue of, oh, why be a musician? Why not yeah. just be something else? You're a pilot, whatever. No, no, no right. yeah, pilot, a pilot would something. be pretty cool. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, everybody has something they want to do that means a lot to them. Mm. Um, and my family has been very supportive. Um, I think obviously there was once a time in Nigeria where the arts weren't, weren't the lucrative and acceptable career that they are today. But I'm really happy that Nigeria has come a long way where people can see the arts as, uh, the arts are an important part of any culture, any community, any economy. So it's really, it's a, it's a great time to be a Nigerian artist. And to answer your question, yeah, my family is super supportive. And they always, you know, I come from a family of entrepreneurs, you know, my mom, my dad did. So they're very much, if you believe in something, put in the work and whether it be art or business, do it really well. Be the best at what you do. So yeah. Would you say that as an artist, yeah. that is easier to bloom and blossom here in Nigeria? Because we find that a lot of our artists who are abroad end yeah. up coming back to Nigeria yeah. to pursue their career. Yeah. Now you've ended up performing both in the UK yeah. and yeah. in Nigeria. Yeah. So let's ask you: Would you say that it's easier coming back to Nigeria? Which do you yeah. prefer? I wouldn't say easier. I would say that it's um, it's different, and because the Nigerian industry is slightly more in its infancy than the rest of the world. It's slightly smaller. So what that means is that there is more access, right? Okay. So in the UK, the industry has been established for hundreds of years. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a, it's a harder industry to crack, but also not just because of the age of the industry, but also it's easier to, to be true to yourself when you're at home. You see what I mean? So the music I was making was never, I wasn't singing, you know, opera or you know I was singing music that I felt came from me and that kind of music is easier to 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 both write and to connect with people I think a lot of musicians is about connection and it's it, there's a everyone can say it doesn't matter in music in any area of life it's easier to connect where you're from than where you're a foreigner 
Okay. Right. So, so actually, I have people virtually calling me on radio shows yeah. saying, yes, play me Bamilo, but Aww. what's your <laughs> own um, take on acceptance of your entry into the industry yeah. from the people mm -hmm. and also your fellow artists yeah. who... Yeah. You know, those you desire to work with, those yeah. who you are close yeah. to and all of that. I mean, it's, it's, been, it's been amazing. So, obviously, I read, Bamilo actually isn't my um, first single. Mm. Bamilo is my second single. My first single was uh, called Tenderoni, and it featured someone called Scales. And Ooh, we all know Scales. Yeah. <laughs> so, Tenderoni was well-received, not as much as Bamilo, because then it was my very first single. I had just come back to Lagos, and, um, but even then... It, it was well received because people were like, oh, you know, it has a nice melody and she can actually sing. Obviously, I'd been two years in mu music school honing my skills and getting ready. So Tenderoni was really well received, but Bamilo was mm. a whole other, <laughs> a whole other ball game. I think the song, people genuinely love the song. You know mm. what I mean? And uh, for an artist, that's the best thing when actually the song does all, almost does all the work for you. You know, so I'm, I'm really blessed to, ha to have so not a lot of artists in the beginning of their career career get a song that just takes off by itself and does its thing mm. so people have been really accepting and so has the industry you know I was a bit nervous of the industry because as with any industry sometimes it can be a bit cliquey it's the same in the UK it's here you have to know who's who and you have to go to all the right events and I'm not very good at those things <laughs> I'm not very good at socializing mm. and stuff so I was a bit nervous as, at first but everyone's made me feel so welcome since being back I'm working with different producers you know, it's exciting. It's the best time to be in Nigerian music. Good. Yeah. And why did you choose Ricardo Banks? Uh, I love Ricardo's voice. I think that, really? um, yes, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I as well. Like, yeah, she really, said, really, I, I was like, I want to be like. Uber talented. I, I think <laughs> Ricardo jumps on his song yeah. and turns it into gold. You know, exactly. so he's like really a nice yeah. person to have. Yeah. Personally, I love him. Too. Yeah, I love his. Voice. I think she has ulterior motives. Is there any? Yes, other because something else is coming after this question. Just answer oh. this one. Oh first. really? Yes. Mm. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Um, yeah, I think his voice. Um, anyone who knows me knows that. Like, if if I have a lot of songs that are like some of my favorite songs, mm -hmm. but one of my absolute favorite songs um, is a song by Ricardo Banks. Yeah. Which? Uh, yeah. Which? Uh, the one featuring Tiwa called Like. I adore that song. Oh, wow. And that it was when I heard that song. I've always thought Ricardo was super talented. But when I heard that song, I was like, oh, wow. Have I'd to wanted, I have to work with this guy. Now, when we were, you were talking about coming back, you mentioned about going to lots of events yeah. and how you're not pretty good at those yeah. things. Yeah. There's something I'm noticing from you. I think you're, not, you're barely even wearing makeup and you're an yeah. absolutely gorgeous oh, woman. Oh, thank you. But <laughs> I'm really bad at makeup. Too, no, so. no, but that's okay. Like, you don't even need <laughs> you're it. You're so beautiful. There, trust me. <laughs> you know, you're really you. beautiful. But unfortunately, mm. ours is an industry tree that has a lot of pressure, pressure yeah. to look a certain way, yeah. dress a certain way. Did you envisage this pressure? Were you prepared? Yeah. And so far, how well would you say you're faring? I've acclimatized. I mean, this is the thing about pressure. Pressure does not exist unless you give into it. It's just this external force that you choose or to buy into or, or not. Mm. Now, that being said, that's not saying that I'm not every now and then that there's certain pressures that you feel, like the pressure to come up with another single that people are going to love as much as they love Bamilo. But... I feel that, um, like I was saying about the Nigerian industry, I feel like it's a lot broader than people give it credit for. And I feel like right now, anyway, people are really accepting of different types of music, different types of individuals that don't fit the mold. So I don't even feel like the most alternative person in Nigeria. There's a, there's a movement of, of a wide range of individuals and artists. So actually, I, don't, I, I never go anywhere and think, oh gosh, I don't fit in, because there's always somebody... <laughs> Who fits in slightly less than me and is perfectly comfortable, you know? So I think that can be in the mind, and I've decided that I'm not going to. You know what I mean? Way to go, girl. You know? that's, that's a brilliant way to go. <laughs> let's mean. look at your favorite uh, bands. I know you're a rock star. Yes. So let's look at I'm a rock star as Are well. You? I love the Coldplay oh and gosh. the Nickelback. Yeah, yeah. You know? Aerosmith. Ooh, yes. three doors down. So who, who are, who would you say are your greatest musical influences in Nigeria and um, internationally? Overseas. Um, so Aerosmith, I love their songwriting. I feel like even though they're a rock band, they they write very meaningful, emotional music, which I love. You know, teenage angst that was like my soundtrack of my teenagers. And then I like uh, Florence and the Machines a I lot. I do too. Right? <laughs> yes. yes, Soul Sister. Um, so that's overseas. There's a few others, um, but I can't name them all now. 
and mm. then at home, um, I'm a massive fan of mm. Two Face. <laughs> You know, and anyone oh. who knows me is like, they're probably looking at the TV like she's going to say Two Face. <laughs> Have you met him? Are you serious? I met him, yeah. So Did you when faint? I, oh my God, almost. Tell so, us about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I met him a few times, but the most recent time was after I did December 20, mm. the tw mm. no, 2017. I did uh, the A Christmas Carol, one of the shows mm. that happens. And um, I finished on stage, you know, I was a little bit nervous. So it's been a while since I did one of those big you know, Christmas, Christmas shows. And I come on stage and guess who was next? And he's <laughs> waiting by the steps to face. He's waiting by the steps to go on next. And I came down and I was sweating and just not cute. And he was like, well done. And I was like, oh. Yeah, I wanted I to breathe. jump on him. I thought, it might be, <laughs> I thought it might be a bit scary. But, you know, I'm a huge fan. I think he's a fantastic songwriter. I went to his show. He did a show recently. Yes. Um, yeah. Am I allowed to stay away? I don't know. We are, we, I think we already know where it happened. <laughs> I, I joined online, though. I right. joined on some, some of my friends who are doing live videos. So yeah, I joined yeah. and I was thinking along to, he yeah, just said, and oh just me, and all his so, old like, I've been to so many of his shows, and each one, it feels like the first time every time. And it's not just like, oh, he's a crush. He, I think he's a fantastic. You know, I leave those shows thinking, wow, I have so much work to do. Like, from that show, I went straight to the studio. Oh, like, right, so yeah, like, I need to write a song, like, Two-Face. You know, <laughs> just, it's good to have people who inspire you, and he's definitely one of those for me. Okay, yeah. so now, um, two questions. Yes. Did you ever have a stint with Ricardo, or? A stint? Did you ever <laughs> have anything yeah. with Ricardo? No. Truly. A truly. I can even tell you the story of how I met Rick, how the song happened. Okay. Right? <laughs> like, so we, um, I'm waiting. I can tell you how the song happened. So I actually have another song coming out soon, so keep your, your, your ears peeled. But that was what I thought I would come back and release, right? Mm. But then, as in the industry, something happened, something happened. I had to delay that song a little bit. But I was being really stubborn because it had been so long since I released Tender Veroni, my first single. So I was being really stubborn about not releasing anything. I said to my manager, I said, I can't leave. This was sort of like December. I was like, I cannot leave 2018 without releasing a song. It's been so long. You know, I've, I've been, I had been making all these selfie videos. Like, I'm in the studio. Can't wait for you guys to hear my new jazz. And everybody's like, Auntie, what have you been booking for you guys? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> literally, I was like, we have to release something. <laughs> so she was like, okay, fine. Uh, I know a producer. I'll bring him in. So she enlists this producer called Ade James. Fantastic mm -hmm. producer. He comes in. We start, he plays, us, he plays us some instrumentals. And in the last, like, two minutes, he's like, I won't have one instrumental. I'm not really sure about but I'll play it to you anyway. He plays it, and I'm like, I love it. You know, so together, we start, to, we start to write melody, put some words to it, wrote verse one, wrote chorus. And then I was like, this feels like it could use a male vocal. Mm -hmm. At this point, not even a, any talk of Ricardo, just a male vocal. Um, so my manager comes, she's like, okay, make a list of everybody you want. Who do you think, who do you think fits in? And again, because of my love for that song, that was already a duet. That was already something I had in my ear. Mm. So I was like, well, I think that my first choice is probably Ricardo on this because A, he's a fantastic singer, songwriter. So I know he'll write this second. I wanted it fast. I was like, I know he'll write this verse like in no time at all. And, um, and it's also good to try and strategically as an artist, you sometimes make I know that Ricardo has a fan base that isn't my fan base. You see what I mean? So mm -hmm. I also wanted somebody that was in a different... Uh, Ricardo is a huge pop star. I'm just an up-and-comer. So it makes sense, you know, and, and he makes, like, mm -hmm. club music, music that people like. So I was True. like, you know. So Ni, uh, my manager emails his manager the song, literally, that as there and then, comes back in the room, and she's like, they love it. Oh. Um, yeah, um, they're going to convince Ricardo to do it. And then... The next morning, I wake up to a text from her. Like, you better be in the studio. Ricardo is coming this afternoon. That's the first time I met Ricardo. Oh, really? Yeah, he comes in the studio. We get on, like, a house on fire as well, so it was easy. He comes in the studio. We vibe. He already had his verse written. In fact, he was like, I have a really cheesy. He told us about the Ajipako line, which is, you know, which is really funny. So he came in. He, sang, he recorded his verse, and that was it. On the average, how long did it take you to record yours, and yes. how long did it take you to record his? I mean... Mine would have been longer because we were actually writing okay. the melody that yeah. we were creating. By the t time he got it, the body, he just had to so fit you, his So you did words. everything in two days? Six mm -hmm. hours max, wow. yeah. Literally. Literally. Yeah. Like, it's what I, I'm still flabbergasted. That's why I'm still, I'm still flabbergasted. That's the fastest I've ever made a song. 
as the fast, fastest I've ever got a feature. You know what I mean? So that's how I met Ricardo. And we're really good friends. And, you know, people will say what they say. You know, two young artists, a mm. picture leaks of them on the set of their video. And people, you know, I, uh, my mom used to always say this quote, people will always choose the most interesting story over the truth. It's interesting. It's juicy. That's see nice. that? Do you know what I mean? But now, there are people who would actually truth. like the story or the idea of that. Oh, people say I'm dating Ricardo yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, Ricard Banks. People say that yeah. the people who thrive on controversy mm. because they believe that no news is bad news. What would yeah. you say about controversy and controversial news? Do you mind? I'm not a fan of controversial news. Um, again, on the one hand, mm. I don't pander to. So if some news comes out that isn't true or isn't great, I don't panic. So when it came out that, oh, Solani and Ricardo, both of us literally sent me a message saying, lol. That was the most we, we even, so I don't, I think that it's also a trap for the individual. Controversial news is also designed sometimes to entice you to get mm. involved. But I don't, I don't believe in creating controversy. I don't think that, because also is that a long term, you know, I, was, I haven't had yeah, yeah. Yeah. a conversation the, with somebody the other, other day about the sustainability of what we do in the arts. And you're better off creating a steady, so if I, I liken it to somebody who has two million followers, right, on, on social media. You have somebody who says, get two million followers by any means necessary because that number is really good. It might bring more attention, sure. it might bring this. But then if, I, as a singer, for example, you go to sell out a show, and of that two million, you can't fill a room with 10,000 fans who come to buy your tickets. What's the point of you ballooning? So I feel like controversy to me is the same thing. You can create a controversy and have loads of eyes on you. But if it doesn't translate into physical bra. cash at the end of the day, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't sense. make sense. So here's uh, fingers <laughs> crossed, hoping that you have a smooth sail through Thank your career in you. Nigeria. Yes. A career void of controversies yeah, and nice. negative <laughs> press. You know, just steady rising to the top yeah. of good news surrounding you. But thank you so thank much you for so joining much, us. Thank you so much, ladies. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.